Thanks so much for checking out this message from LifeGate Church. We hope that God uses this message to encourage you and help you grow deeper in your faith. G'day, thanks for joining us. My name's Nathan. I'm the lead pastor of LifeGate. And I've got a message entitled for you today, The Power of Gratitude. Hey, we're going to pray, then we're going to dive in. I encourage you to pray with me. Father, we thank you for who you are, that you are our creator, that you are our sustainer. You are the one who walks with us through the difficult seasons of life. Father, we pray for this season particularly. Father, I pray that you'd strengthen us. We pray that we would keep our mind upon you. And as we come to your word today, you'll give us ears that are open, hearts that are open to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to start by saying happy Father's Day to all the dads. You know, Father's Day is a day we want to remember and celebrate our dads for who they are and all that they've done for us. It's the day where we show gratitude toward our dads. You know, one of the ways that we show gratitude is by buying presents. And we do that on Father's Day. And dads, dads get some really interesting presents on Father's Day. They get the socks, they get the undies, they also get the power tools, they get the chocolate and all those really good things. But I reckon some of the best presents we get as dads are those creative presents that our kids create for us when they're young. Over the years, I've, I've collected some creative presents that my kids have done for me and I want to share some of them with you. The first one is one that one of my kids created at school. It's a business shirt with a tie and it says, I really love you, you are really cool and fun. That's pretty special. This one's one that uh, Joel created on the back of a brown paper bag and it says, he got pictures of the family and it says, I love you very much, love Joel. That's really cool. And then I think it was last year or the year before, um, my daughter Alicia made me this. She drew pictures of our family, did that on one side, rainbow. And then on the other side, she wrote some stuff down in her learning to write English. She wrote, to dad, five things that I like about you. She wrote, you're funny, you play with me, you buy me stuff, you're kind and funny, you're silly. And she's drawn a picture down here. And on the other side, she's given me coupons that I can use for her to help me and, and do things for me. The, um, it says to dad, five coupons for dad. Number one is help cook dinner. Number two, help do the laundry. Number three, sleep in my bedroom. Haven't taken that one on. Four cuddles, kisses, and, it written, and she's written, I love you, Dad. You are the best. And Alicia, as you watch this, thank you very much. Those things are very special to us. I think it's those presents that, that are creative that our kids give us. They're the, they're the most special ones. And on Father's Day, as we remember our dads and we give them gifts, you know, I think it really encourages our dads. Not only do we celebrate them and tell them that we think they're great for all that they've done, but it motivates our dads to keep on going, to keep on loving, to keep on serving, serving their kids. And I reckon for the dads, it gives them the thought, well, you know what, it's, it's, it's actually been worth it. Friends, I want to tell you today that, that, that the gratitude is powerful. When we are grateful, it's powerful. Today I want to give you two reasons why gratitude is powerful, but before I do that, I just want to give you a definition of gratitude. Here's the definition. A strong feeling of appreciation to someone for what they've done for you. One more time. A strong feeling of appreciation to someone for what they've done for you. That's a great definition of gratitude. And I want to give you two reasons why gratitude is powerful. The first one is this. It encourages others. Just like they talk about um, when fathers get gifts and it motivates them to keep on loving and it's, and it's all worth it. When we show gratitude, when we communicate gratitude to people, it encourages them to keep on going, to keep on loving, to keep on serving. For my 40th birthday, I received an incredible gift. Here, here it is here. And it, it doesn't look like much, but my, it's something that my wife put together. She got a dad to make some bits of timber on the outside. And as you open it up, she asked people who are part of my world that I care about, love, part of our church and family, to write me notes about the influence I've been on their lives. This one's from my wife. This one's from Aiden, um, Joel, Alicia, my parents is there. 
They got one from my dad, and the list goes on. Brothers, sisters, and people from church. Here's one from the Clouts. This one's from Rachel and Craig Owen. This one's from Gay and Teddy Lee, Emma Odgers, Kerry de Montfort. All people in my life who are special to me. And, and, and as I got it, and, and it keeps going and going and going, and, and as I read it through, I just teared up. And I was just so, so encouraged as I read these notes. Because these, as people wrote, they wrote notes of gratefulness for the influence that I've had on their lives. And there's personal comments about some of the things I did for people and what they've seen in me and how it's encouraged them. And let me tell you, this little book um, is the greatest gift that I've been given other than what Christ has done for us because it's so encouraging. It's so encouraging to me. And on my, and on my down days, when life seems hard, when ministry seems hard, I can go back to this, open it up, and be reminded that what I'm doing is worth it. I'm greatly encouraged by, by the gratitude of others. And let me encourage you that when you are grateful, when you say thank you, it greatly encourages others. That's the first reason why gratitude is powerful, because people are encouraged to keep on going, to keep on loving, to keep on serving, to keep on doing what they're doing to influence the lives of others. Number one. Number two, gratitude is powerful because it focuses us on the positive, which helps us thrive. One more time. When we're grateful, it focuses us on the positive, not the negative, on the positive, which actually helps us thrive. You know, on, today is our Father's Day, and it's a day we celebrate our dads. But if I ask you the question, is your dad perfect? And the obvious answer is no, because no dad is perfect. Every dad lets us down. Every dad does things, said things they shouldn't, that hurt. Every dad um, doesn't meet our expectations. Every dad has their failings, right? And if Father's Day was a day where we thought of all the negative stuff and we thought of all the failings and we gathered together and we talked about all the failings and all the negative stuff in our dad's man, Father's Day would be a pretty awful day. It would be a day of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, resentment, and and the list goes on of all the times our dads have let us down. Because as we focus on the negative... It affects our attitudes. It affects how we think. It affects our, um, it affects our emotions. It affects our relationships. It affects what's going on in the room. But that's not how we do Father's Day, is it? And at Father's Day, we, we are choose to overlook all the negative stuff and choose to think about all the positive stuff about our dads, the times that they've been kind and loving, all the times that they've provided for us as their kids and put their arm around us and told us that they love us. And we don't put our mind on the negative, but rather on the positive. And we come with a positive attitude and we give gifts and we celebrate. And because our attitude is positive, because we're focusing on the positive things, we create an attitude of love, an environment of acceptance, an environment of gratitude. See, gratitude, in gratitude, it means that we focus on the positive things, which in turn affects the way we think, the way we feel, and affects our behavior. You know, I did some research on this uh, gratitude stuff, and I found an article online written by the Harvard Medical School around psychologists, and it's a a psychology article, and it's around gratitude, and and, and I want to give you a little bit about what it said. It says this, with gratitude... People acknowledge the goodness in their lives. In the process, people people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies at least partially outside themselves. In positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. One more time, this sliding is great. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, adversity, and build strong relationships. When we focus on the positive, friends, it helps us to thrive. Why is gratitude so important, number one? 
Why is gratitude so powerful? It encourages others. And, and when we focus on the positive, it helps us thrive. And how important is that in this season right now? Um, as I bring this message, I'm in Sydney, Australia, and we're currently in lockdown. And what that lockdown means is that um, we can only leave our homes for essential reasons. We can't have parties with friends. We can't have dinner with family. Um, and it's really difficult, particularly for those who are single on their own, and also for those with young kids. They're, they are really struggling in this season. And in this COVID lockdown season, there is so much um, negativity and so much um, bad news that we keep hearing about. Our government continues to tell us the, the number of COVID cases, which can seem like all doom and gloom. And the reality is, if we continue to think about all the negative stuff, man, it can get us to be in a really bad way. Because as we think about negative things, we start to lose the colours of life and life starts to become black and white and grey rather than the colours of the rainbow as we sit in negative thinking. Rather than being positive, we start to get negative. Rather than be, be, be full of gratitude, we become critical. And if we sit in negativity long enough, we can spiral down and down to a place of depression and even worse. And that's one way of coping through COVID or just surviving through COVID. But friends, there's another way. There's another way of not just surviving through COVID, but rather thriving through this COVID lockdown. And that is by being grateful for what we have, by focusing on the positive, which will in turn help us to thrive. And we can focus on the things of what we have, we can focus on the blessing of the family that our God has given us. We can be grateful for the doctors and the nurses and our medical system. We can be grateful that we live in Australia, just the greatest country on earth. Incredible place. We can be grateful for our supermarkets and the food. We can be grateful for Zoom, and I know some of us have got Zoom fatigue, but the fact that we have Zoom and we can see people's faces face to face, we can be grateful for social media. We can be grateful even for all that we've had in life. You know, speaking to someone recently who's going through a really difficult season and the future doesn't look great. And I sense the Lord dropping my spirit to, to, uh, to uh, share with her to look back and be grateful for all the years that she's had. And that's so important that we can get so caught up in today and, and, and what the future could look like and all the what ifs. We can lose sight of what we have and what we've had and all those wonderful, positive experiences of life. We can lose sight of that. But as we put our mindsets and our thinking on the things that we can be grateful for, you know, it takes away the negativity and puts our, puts our thoughts on positive things, which in turn makes us thrive, makes us feel joyful, thankful, pleased. We are much more likely to show love, and gratitude. You know, the, the, the gratitude, friends, is powerful. Number one, because it encourages others. And number two, it focuses us on the positive, which helps us thrive. So as we look at gratitude in this message, I want to ask you two questions. Question number one is this. What are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? And number two, how are you showing your gratefulness? I'm going to come back to these questions at the end of this message, but they're the two things I want to leave you with today. What are you grateful for? Because as we put our minds on those things, it helps us thrive. And how are you communicating your gratefulness, which is about encouraging others? I'm going to ask you to think about these things, and we'll come back to them at the end of this message. Today I want to take you to Luke chapter 17. And it's a story where a group of people encounter Jesus. Jesus heals them and it radically transforms their lives. And out of those 10 people, only one person came back to show gratitude to Jesus. Let's look at this text. It's from Luke chapter 17, verse 11. It says this. Now on his way, here's his Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, 
Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Super important verse. Verse 15, One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Leprosy is a horrible skin disease which sees the disintegration of the skin and the extremities. People with leprosy over time lose their fingers, toes, ears, nose, the extremities of their body. And to be a person with a skin disease, leprosy or another skin disease at the time of Jesus, um, you were seen as unclean. And there were some horrible consequences to that. Um, In the law of Moses, God gave instructions to Moses for people with skin diseases. And as you read it, I'm about to read it to you from Leviticus, you can see that you, you might think, well, what God has said is pretty harsh, but what God is actually doing, he's trying to protect the nation, trying to protect the community from skin diseases. So he asked those with skin diseases to go into quarantine to separate themselves from the rest of society. This is what we read in um, Leviticus chapter 13. It says, Anyone with such a a defiling disease, and the first 40 verses of chapter 13 talks about the various skin diseases, and there was many. It says, Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be kept, be unkept, cover the lower part of their face, and cry out, Unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they must remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. So to have a skin disease like leprosy, it was a really difficult thing. You had to dress differently. You had to show people that your hair unkept. You had to cover part of your face to, 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 to tell everybody, stay away from me. And if people got close to you, you had to call out, unclean, unclean. It was a really difficult thing. It meant that they couldn't live with family and friends. It meant that they couldn't work. They were meant that they were they were looked down on. They were rejected by their family and friends. It was a horrible way to live. And one day Jesus turns up. And the scripture teaches us that these men with leprosy see Jesus coming, and it says that from a distance they call out to Jesus. And that was the correct thing to do. They were to keep a distance because they weren't to get too close. And they cried out to Jesus. Look at what it says in verse 12. They stood at a distance and these people with leprosy called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest. Now that was important because in Leviticus it says that If you think you've been healed of your skin disease, you need to go and show yourself to the priest, and the priest will be the one to say yes or no. And if the priest says, yes, you're healed, you can go back into your community. You can go back to life as normal, which would have been a massive thing for these people. And Jesus says here, go and show yourself to the priest and show that you've been healed. And then it says, and as they went, they were cleansed. Super interesting. And there's a principle there for us. Off topic of gratitude But there's a principle here about stepping into the things that Jesus has for us. It says that Jesus says, "As go and show yourself to the priest. And as they look at the self and they haven't moved yet, they haven't been healed. But it's as they step forward, as they step out, as they start to head in that direction, then they have the healing that Jesus wanted for them. It's as they stepped out, they were healed. And as we step out in faith, That's when we see the breakthrough in our lives. It's a great principle for us. And then the scripture says this. One of them, when he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He showed his gratitude toward Jesus. And he was a Samaritan. Interesting thing here, that out of all the people that were healed, 
a Samaritan man, a man who was in conflict with Jews, a person who would never have a relationship with a Jewish religious leader or a Jewish rabbi teacher. He's the one that comes back and says, thank you. And Jesus replies um, in this text, where is everybody else? Weren't more healed? Yet this, only, this, this, this one man, this Samaritan, has come back to say thank you. You know, in this passage, Jesus radically changed their lives. They were people who were in the, on their own, living with a bunch of other people with leprosy and other skin diseases. They were exiled from their community. They didn't have the friendship, the family, the jobs, the parties. They were, they were living a miserable life. And Jesus comes and does something incredible for these men with leprosy. Now, were they grateful? No doubt, absolutely. Were they thankful? Absolutely. But interesting, only one came back to say thank you. And here's the principle for us. We need to be people who communicate our gratefulness. In this text, Jesus celebrates the one who communicates his gratefulness. And we as people need to communicate our gratefulness to others. And on this Father's Day, it's a great opportunity for us to communicate our gratefulness to say thank you to our dads for all that they've done for us, for the times they've changed our nappies and provided food and housing for us, the times that they've comforted us when things have been difficult, when they've given us wisdom and advice. We need to be people who communicate our gratitude, and we can do that through giving gifts. We can do that through our words and saying thank you. We can do that through writing letters and notes and creating and doing things that show that we are grateful to our dads. But it's not just on Father's Day that we should communicate our gratefulness. You know, we should be people who are regularly saying thank you and appreciative of what people do around us. Appreciative to our parents. Appreciative to our kids when they help us out. Appreciative in the workplace and grateful in the workplace when people come alongside us and support us and do jobs for us. We need to be people who say thankful and grateful. When we're shopping at, at Coles or Woolworths and we can't reach the top shelf, we find some tall person and they reach it for us, we can be grateful to them and say thank you. We can be grateful when someone cooks us a meal when we're struggling. Let's be people who are grateful. Because we know the power of gratefulness. Two reasons why gratefulness, why gratitude is powerful. Number one, it encourages others. And number two, it focuses us on the positive, which helps us thrive. You know, as I think about my life and the things that I'm grateful for, I'm super grateful for my wife. Um, I shared about the book that she's written for me, but she's my best friend and and an incredible support for me. She's the person I can be most honest and real with, and she's just doing the journey of life with me. I'm super grateful for her. I'm super grateful for my great kids um, and how they're turning out and our friendship and also the parent-child thing going on, the great kids. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for my dad on this Father's Day, and Dad, and you're no doubt watching this. I'm thankful for your wisdom and your support, your work ethic, the way you provided for your family, your wisdom around finance, the stuff that I've caught and hopefully applying to um, my life and my family. I'm grateful for LifeGate Church and the privilege that I have to lead LifeGate Church. Um, it's, an inc- it's a great church and I've been leading it now for 13 years and I think, wow, what a privilege. I'm super excited about what the future looks like as we see the vision that God's given us fulfilled. I'm grateful for you guys who are watching and doing the journey of being LifeGate Church for me. Because a pastor's taken a walk on his own unless he has people following. And as the shepherd of the community, I want to say thank you for you for listening and being part of it and allowing me to influence your life. You know, there's many, many things that I'm grateful for. And as I reflect on all these things, you know, all these things and people came from God, who is the source of everything that we have. The creator who's created everything, if it doesn't exist, he hasn't, he hasn't made it. God has given us everything, the scripture says, for our enjoyment. And I'm so thankful for God for what he's given us. And in the scripture we see in Luke 17 that Jesus celebrates the man who comes back and says thankful. And there's a great principle there for us that is, that is people who are following Jesus or people who are not yet 
made a decision to follow Jesus, that we recognize that God is the source of all that we have and we are thankful to him for all that he's given us. And the scripture talks about it. Be thankful. Praise God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Being continually thank, thankful to God. Be prayers of thanksgiving for all that he's give, given us. And we can do that in our words. But God just doesn't want our words. He wants all of our lives. There's these, um, as we come to the end of this message, I briefly want to share a couple of quick scriptures with you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, it says to offer your bodies, live lives holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now rather than explain all that verse, I just want to highlight the first bit. He says, in view of God's, in view of God's mercy, live holy lives, pleasing lives to God. And we see something similar in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. He says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Both these verses, Romans 12, 1 and Ephesians 4, 1, are the pivotal verses in these letters. They're letters written by Paul. And the first 11 chapters of Romans is all about what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. And then Romans 12, 1 says, in view of that, live this way. And Romans 12 through to the end of the letter talks about how to live. Same thing in Ephesians. Ephesians 1 to 3 is all that God has done for us through Jesus. And Ephesians 4, 1, he says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling of all that God has done, the calling that God's called you to. Now live a life that pleases him. These pivotal verses remind us to look to what God has done for us and then live in a way that pleases him. And these verses before these pivotal verses talk about all that God has done. And God has done so much for us. He's given us our dads and our families and our finance. And he's the the provider of our homes. He's the one who gives us all these things. But the biggest thing, the greatest thing that Christ, that God has ever done for us, is given us his son Jesus. That God loved me, that God loved you so much that he gave us his son Jesus. The greatest gift humanity could ever receive, could ever be given because we were lost. The Bible says because of our sin, we were separated from God. We deserved death. We had no relationship with God. But because of God's love for us, he sent his son Jesus so that the death sentence that was on our lives could be paid for, that our relationship that that was non-existent with God could be born again, that we could have a fresh new relationship with God, that we could have a purpose In life, we could have our sin forgiven. That is why Christ has come to restore us, to pay the price we couldn't pay. And then in his resurrection, as the first one to rise from the dead and now seat to be seated at the right hand of the Father, he now offers eternal life, everlasting life to everybody who puts their faith in him. And if you're a Christian and you've accepted what Christ has done for you, you had, God has done the most incredible thing and God wants us to live a life of gratitude where we are thankful to God for all that he's done for us, not just in our words, but in the way that we live. Living a life where we're living under his authority, where we say yes to the things he wants us to say yes to, where we say no to the things he wants us to say no to, where we choose to honor him, live a life of gratitude in every area, to say thank you to God for all that he's given us, particularly his son Jesus. So as we come to the end of this message, I want to go back to those two questions around gratitude. The first one is this. So what are you grateful for? It's super important to be aware of that, to think about all the things in life that you can be grateful for. You can thank God for that. But not only... Is it about thanking God? But as we think about the things that we're grateful for, it puts our minds on the positive things, which changes our attitudes and helps us thrive. What are you grateful for? And the second thing is how are you showing your gratefulness? Just like in Luke 17, where Jesus celebrated the leper who came back and said thank you. Just like on Father's Day, we celebrate our dads. Let me ask you the question, how are you showing your gratefulness? Because when we are grateful, it encourages others. So I want to give you 30 seconds right now just to reflect and pray and to ask yourself the question, these two, these, these two questions. 
What are you grateful for? And how are you showing your gratefulness? Take 30 seconds, pray, reflect on these things. Let's pray. Father, we want to say thank you for all that we have. We thank you for our dads on this day. We thank you for our parents, our children. We thank you for our family, our extended family. We thank you for our food and our homes, our cars. We thank you that we can live in Australia. We thank you for our medical system, our doctors, our nurses. We thank you for advancements in science and research and medication and all that stuff. God, we thank you for it. Father, we are grateful. And God, we want to say thank you for you, that you are the one. Thank you to you, for you are the one who has given us all these things. For you are the creator of all things, and it's from you all these things come. For you are the source. And today we want to acknowledge, God, that you are the source of all the things, all the great things we have in our life. And for that, we say thank you. Father, we want to say thank you for Jesus, the the, greatest gift that you could ever give us that it's through Jesus, that it's through his death and it's through his resurrection, that we can have sin forgiven, we can have relationship with you, and we can have eternal life. And God, we thank you for that. Father, we pray that we'll be people who show our gratefulness, that we will say thank you when people do great things for us, that we will give gifts, that we will write notes, that we would encourage others, Lord, in that for them to keep on going that will be people who are grateful, not only to others, but also grateful to you for all that you've done for us, that we would live a life that pleases you, that we would live a life that honours you, that we would live a life that shines your light in this world and just declares to the world how great you are. Father, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, happy Father's Day. Be blessed. Um, Have a great day. Whatever you're doing, Zooming or giving gifts or making phone calls, um, be, be grateful for your dads and show your gratefulness to them. Hey, thanks for being part of it. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for checking out this message. LifeGate Church has people meeting in person and online in many different locations, and we'd love to help you get connected. My name is Andrew and I lead our online team here at LifeGate Church and it's our job to do exactly that. We'd love to support you, uh, help you get connected and find out how you can take your next steps. So why don't you head to lifegate.org.au slash online and we'd love to find out more about you and how we can serve you as a church. Thanks for checking out this message and we'll catch you soon.